Good morning and a warm welcome to you all as we continue our Lent readings. And today's reading is by Rob Wickham, the Bishop of Edmonton. And the title of the reading is called Having the Same Love. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And that's Philippians chapter 2 verses 1 to 11. Dietrich Bonhoeffer's writings are profound. In June 1944 as part of a series of poems from prison he wrote the iconic poem, Who Am I? In it, he asks the deep question of meaning and identity. Who am I? Am I the person whom the prison warders see, confident, cheerful and outwardly calm, despite being imprisoned in a Nazi concentration camp? Or am I the person who hurts, a weakling, desperate for friends, birdsong and freedom? Bonhoeffer concludes that he is in fact both. He is a contradiction in terms who ultimately recognises that he is God's. And this is all that counts. Bonhoeffer's honesty is refreshing. He sees it in his own brokenness and vanity that for him to really flourish he needs Jesus Christ. It is only in Jesus Christ that he can become fully himself. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit does not make us more and more like clones, but rather more beautiful and unique, made in God's image, and liberated by God's extravagant grace. St. Paul is also in prison as he writes his letter to the Christians in Philippi. Chapter 2 in his letter is a beautiful hymn to powerlessness and humility. Rather than echo the farewell discourses in John's Gospel, Paul reminds us that we are to make joy complete in one another. To do this, we must lay aside our vanity and self-indulgence and strive for the common good. We must be clear of our motives and motivations so that we do not coerce or manipulate others for our own ends. Instead, we are to regard others as better than ourselves and to be ready to support others' interests rather than pushing our own selfish ambition. St Paul reminds us that our privilege in living the Christian life is to become more Christ-like, which means that we become more fully ourselves. It is God who empties himself so that his people can become one with him. It is God who, through the cross, enables us to become citizens and co-heirs with Christ of the Kingdom of God. This is an extraordinary act of powerlessness and humility, a wonderful act of generosity, whereby God places you at centre stage. It is because of you that God went to these great lengths. It is because of our brokenness and our confusion that God chooses to transform our flesh, to defeat our death and to bring us home. 
Therefore, despite the messiness of our day-to-day -day lives, like Bonhoeffer, we can each add, Lord, I am thine. This self-emptying image is sometimes seen as the prayer of the desert. For centuries, Christians have taken to the desert to understand their humanity in places of nothingness. This is known as apop apophatic prayer. A prayer that seeks to be rid of all external stimuli, emptying the mind of words and ideas, and simply resting in the presence of God. In this place, the searcher will find Jesus, who has self-emptied, who desires relationship, and who loves the searcher. This is a quest for love, a quest of meaning and identity, wrapped not in vanity and self-delusion, but with the clarity of nothingness. There are many desert fathers and mothers who can help shape this journey of discovery. But Charles de Foucauld may be helpful to us here. A Catholic priest and hermit in the 19th century, Charles was the founder of the Little Brothers of Jesus. His prayer of abandonment contains powerful and painful imagery which has shaped many lives that were once gripped by vanity. The prayer of abandonment is a Lenten prayer, which we may like to make our own for the remaining days of Lent. These are words that St. Paul and Dietrich Bonhoeffer might have grasped with enthusiasm. Action. Could we incorporate Foucault's prayer of abandonment into different parts of our routine today? Perhaps before a big task that we have to do, or before we set off on a journey, or as we prepare a meal. Prayer. Father, I abandon myself into your hands. Do with me what you will. Whatever you may do, I thank you. I am ready for all. I accept all. Let only your will be done in me and in all your creatures. I wish no more than this, O Lord. Into your hands I commend my soul. I offer it to you with all the love of my heart. For I love you, Lord, and so need to give myself to surrender myself into your hands without reserve and with boundless confidence, for you are my Father. <laughs>